Alright, so finally getting around to changing the fuel pump, or at least start doing it. Um, so, there's a tool that you can buy to take this lock ring off to get this all out. I mean, I don't do it very often, so buying the tool to me seems like something I, I shouldn't do, but, I mean, that's up to you. Um, anyways, I typically just use like a flathead screwdriver and a, and a hammer and gently tap these little little tabs like right about there they're spread across like there's another one there and you just gently quarter, uh, counterclockwise twist it and it should come right off um, you take this electrical connector down here out that's for it goes to your gauges just it just disconnects real easy just got one of these little clippies Put, you pull up on it and pull it and it just comes right off. Uh, I'm just kind of set that off to the side. Then we're going to take these, this clamp, these two clamps, these two clamps, and these clamps off. Then we're going to take all these hoses off. Because um, I'm going to be replacing them. So we're going to take all that off so we can get all these hoses and stuff off and then that way this is free to turn and do whatever it needs to do. So uh, keep watching. Another cool little trick that I don't know if a lot of you guys know, um, or anybody for that matter knows, if you got a hose that's real old, kind of stuck on there like this, like any of these actually are, um, get yourself a pair of channel locks or pliers, really anything that you can rat grab to get a good grip around that. You squeeze it, obviously adjust it so it's not too tight. You don't want to damage the steel underneath or anything, but make it so that I can kind of nicely grab the the hose there and you twist it a little bit this goes for any hose even like radiator hoses and stuff like that twist it see that see how easy and free flowing that hose is now before I was gonna fight the, the hell out of that trying to get that off so that helps break it up a little bit so you can get it off a little easier I usually do both ends just because now normally when you do one it breaks free the other end so you don't necessarily have to do both ends, but certainly does make for a lot easier time. So, just thought I'd let you know. Alright, 
so got everything but the fuel strainer back on. It's my the new pump. Got my new piece of hose in there. Don't really like the fact that they sent me these, but it's inside the tank, so I don't really care that as much. Um, new fuel sending unit, O-ring, that kind of thing. Um, I didn't end up reusing any of the wires for the power feed here that they supply into the tank. Um, probably should, but I've never done it, and it, does, it seems to work just fine. But anyways, I said I would check the fuel sending unit to make sure it still worked. So what you're going to need is to get yourself a what they call a, a multimeter, or I've heard some people call it a voltmeter, ohmmeter, whatever. Doesn't matter. It's actually a multimeter or multimeter if you want to get, you know, fancy, whatever. Uh, but anyways, got different settings on it, hence why it's a multimeter or multimeter. Um, and mine, in particular, has different RPM slash dwells, um, con uh, continuity, resistance, DC voltage, AC voltage, other stuff, dwells for measuring, you know, gaps for or the gap basically for points and condenser setups. Uh, but anyways, all right. So you got the old connector here. Put your leads inside the connector. Doesn't really matter which way is which. It's gonna read positive voltage either way, or in this case resistance. There's no real such thing as negative resistance. Um, but anyways, shove them in the connector. Set your, in my case, I have to set my range, like I said earlier. So I set mine to 200. I don't need any more than that. 200 range in the ohms or resistance category. Plug it all in, and then you're just gonna move your float up and down. And when you move it up, you should gain resistance, right? When you move it down, you should lose resistance. So when you gain resistance, obviously, you have more fuel. When you lose, or when you drop resistance, you lose fuel. You've used some, right? You've driven the car. So anyways, this is fully up. Uh, I was off. I, was, I got about 100-ish ohms. Then as you bring it down, as you can see, there we go, much better. As you can see, the resistance drops until you hit complete bottom, which I'm completely at the bottom now would be empty tank basically is what that would be reading ten and a half ohms okay so mine's off by a little bit um, but that's within spec so I'll be going ahead and throwing this back in the car here in just a second truck rather